Hey everyone, uh, it's Ross Power here, Product Manager at Checked, and I just wanted to record a video to help you better understand what it is that we've launched today um, with the Veramo SDK for Checked. A lot of the things that we do at Checked are quite complicated. We're definitely at a um, the network level of SSI, and it's difficult to definitely um, keep up with what it is we're building. So really eager to help break these down, break down the key terms, and help you better understand what it is we're actually delivering on uh, week in, week out. So today we basically launched the Veramo SDK for Checked. Um, Veramo SDK for Checked is a JavaScript-based software development kit, which enables our partners to start actually using the Checked network and our tools um, to build their identity applications, their decentralized identity applications. But what does this actually mean? I think one of the best ways to help illustrate this is through using the Trust over IP um, model or stack. So I'm going to basically just talk you through this, um, where Checked st sits in the stack. As a reminder, um, if you might already know this, where software development kits sit in the overall stack, and then where the application layer sits, and how these link together so you can better understand what, what, we're, what we're doing actually means for you. So I'm just going to present my screen here, and we'll start talking you through this. So if you want to do this yourself, you can head over to trustoverip.org and go over to the model. And from here, you mm -hmm. can actually go straight to a interactive model, which is a really great way to start better understanding SSI more generally. Um, if you then hit conceptual model, you'll see this stack of, of four different key kind of uh, pillars within the stack, which um, is what I'm going to talk through today. So before I get onto software development kits and Veramo SDK, I just want to talk through some of the basics of what we mean by um, this stack and, and some of the fundamental aspects of SSI. So to begin with SSI and what this means for you as the average user, what this means for me and what this means for, for anyone else that will be using decentralized identity applications in the future. So at layer four, right at the top of the stack, you have the application layer. And at this layer, this is essentially what you actually would interact with. Um, imagine you go to the airport and you have your cell phone. And on your phone, you have a wallet similar to what could be a crypto wallet. Um, but this is a more specific wallet for SSI, for decentralized identity SSI credentials or verifiable credentials. So you arrive at the airport and you need to begin by showing something like your passport. You may also need to have your boarding pass there. And for some countries, you may also need to have proof of health insurance and even a COVID credential. All of these would be seen as different verifiable credentials, which you'll need to present at a time of being asked. All of these things basically exist at the application layer. You as the user will have an app on your phone. And in doing so, you're basically able to present your verifiable credentials, your trusted data to, an, to a verifier of that. Um, and they're able to basically see what you're doing, um, that you, you have the necessary credentials to board a flight um, or taking a different use case, um, various university credentials to get a certain job and, and so forth. So think of layer four is really what you see day to day is what's on your phone. It might be on a web application. It's really what you interact with. But in order to go deeper into that, you basically need to have the back end technologies, which do all the pretty smart, incredible um, technologies which exist within SSI. And the key things that we're kind of talking about is verifiable credentials and decentralized identifiers. So if we kind of go through these this stack in a bit more detail, at layer three, you have the data exchange protocol layer. And if you know a little thing or two about SSI, you'll probably understand this relationship between an issuer, a holder, and a verifier. And this is generally known as a trust triangle. How this essentially works is in order for a verifier to trust that a credential is issued by the correct person to be able to have trust in the data or have trusted data, they need to be able to trust that the issuer of that is really the actual issuer that um, has the right to issue that credential. And so what we see here is the issuer being able to issue a verifiable credential to the holder. When that holder on their wallet, as I kind of talked about at the application layer, goes to a verifier and says, hey, I want to basically show that I have the necessary credentials to board your flight, to go into this country, um, to apply for this job. The verifier basically needs to be able to check that the holder has the necessary requirements to do so, the necessary verifiable credential to do so. However, in the current kind of paradigm, the current identity paradigm, how this generally works is in order for the verifier to be able to verify that the data that the holder has is indeed um, legitimate, 
that they can trust it. There needs to be a relationship directly between the verifier and the issuer. The issuer needs to have a centralized uh, storage, centralized way of holding that information so that the verifier can actually ask them. So the verifier will say, hey, issuer, I want to be able to verify that this holder, this person has the necessary requirements, has the necessary credentials um, for me to give them access or get them, allow them to board a flight. Taking a slightly different example, um, when you sign up to a bank, you tend to go through a KYC, a know your customer process. And what happens is you tend to have a kind of a third party which will do some background checks on you. That third party might look at a proof of address. It might look at something like a driving license. It might even look at more specific pieces of information um, of your, um, your financial background and so forth. So that verifier will basically take your information, which you might present to them. You might send them a copy of your passport. You might even send them a selfie. They'll then take the information and then they'll do the background checks, which basically means they're contacting an issuer and they're saying, hey, um, does this person have the necessary uh, piece of information? Is this information right? Can I trust this information? So what this ends up meaning is your verifier and issuer both have to have centralized piece of information. They both have to hold a lot of your personal data. With this trust triangle, you're kind of we're, we're completely changing the paradigm here. And how this works is essentially the issuer issues a credential and in doing so they sign that credential with their sig signature or they sign it with their public key which is known as a decentralized identifier that holder is basically then able to store the credential in their own wallet their verified credential in their own wallet meaning that the issue and the verifier don't actually need to store that information themselves what then happens is the verifier when they're asked by the holder, hey, can you verify this piece of information for me? Can I can I show you my passport? Can I show you this thing so I can have the outcome that I'm looking for? The verifier will basically look at that credential and they will check that the signature on that, the public, um, the public decentralized identifier on that is indeed um, issued, is indeed the correct one of the issuer. And they'll do that by looking up a verifiable data registry, which is essentially just a, um, uh, a lookup table you can think of it like some like an excel document where they're basically saying does this decentralized identifier link to the correct organization and therefore can i trust that the holder that's given me this credential is trustworthy there's a lot more to this but that's kind of a good introduction and this is really important when trying to understand software development kits i'm just going to come down through here to the public utilities there one now so in that previous kind of layer three, I was talking through how you need to have a decentralized identifier, which is stored on a verifiable data registry so that when the um, verifier is trying to verify this information, they can look up that signature against this, um, this lookup table. That lookup table or that verifiable data registry is what checked is. So we as checked as an organization are building a public permissionless ledger for you to be able to, for the verifier and issuer to be able to check these decentralized identifiers. So where does software development kits come in? Well, we have a huge number of partners building some pretty amazing applications in the SSI ecosystem, whether this is university credentials, whether it's things around COVID vaccines and COVID passports, um, there's all sorts of different areas that our partners are building. And we'll be sharing more about these use cases over the coming weeks and months. In order for these, um, these partners to be able to start interacting with different ledgers, such as Checked, they need to be able to interoperate, in, have interoperable um, technologies that enable them to do so. So when we're talking about software development kits, we're basically talking about the different technologies which exist at this layer three and layer two area. And so this includes things like um, proof formats, which is basically the way that you encode um, information in a credential. You kind of encode that into um, a way that kind of is, no, is non-human readable. It's secure, it's privacy preserving. And there's various different other kind of key technologies which exist around the verifiable credential area, which enable us to be able to kind of have secure trust in the data itself. So when we're talking about the Veramo SDK and when we're talking about our launch of this today, what we're essentially meaning is at Checked, we've used the Veramo SDK, which is basically a compilation of libraries. And we've built some of our own plugins to that to be able to enable our partners building applications at that application layer to be able to start interacting with the public utilities with us at Checked. So what does this actually mean overall? It means our partners can more easily start to create decentralized identifiers on the check network 
can update these decentralized identifiers when they need to, and they can just do gen general management of their decentralized identifiers. It also means that, that our partners can start issuing verifiable credentials, and they can start testing to verify those verifiable credentials, and they can also issue and verify verifiable presentations. So essentially, the Czech network is now at a point where our partners can really start to get full, full access and, and start to really utilize the Czech network for what it's uh, what we're setting out to. Our next step is going to be building out the revocation registry, which is a key part of being able to enable our partners to really start utilizing the network to its fullest. And then after that, we'll be use, building out the credential payment rails, which is what the Czech token will ultimately be for. And this was where we'll come back to this kind of relationship between the issuer, the holder and the verifier. So thanks for watching there. I think this is a relatively introductory kind of um, level of, of what, what the SSI stack is all about and what the Veramo SDK is all about. We shared a blog which goes into more detail, so happy to take some more questions on that. And yeah, really looking forward to having more questions, really looking forward to helping you better understand what it is we're doing at Checked and better understand what the technology that we're implementing is. Because overall, this is all about driving the general adoption and the widespread adoption of self-sovereign identity and help take back and get control of our data. Thanks for watching and happy to take any more questions in any of the chats.